Hello my beautiful badgers, this is the first video in using Messi's Easy Settings Toolkit. Uh, I've got to come up with a better name for these assets, but this one's messed. So there are some dependencies depending on what type of game you're making, if you're going to be using the new input system or the old input system. At the moment I'm only supporting a built-in render pipeline which is known as Burp, but URP and HDRP support is coming soon, it's actually should just be very easy to do it. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple of things we're going to need if we are using built-in. Regardless if you are using old input system or new input system, you want your games to be pretty. So stick in the post process, post, post process, the PP package. Okay, I haven't got my teeth in. Don't ask me to say post processing. I just can't do it. So make sure you've got it imported in. And also, you want to make sure you've got Text Mesh Pro. Now, I'm using three. See this up arrow here? You don't need to upgrade to the latest version just to use my kit, but I'm one of those that would always agree that upgrading to the latest version is probably best in the newer versions of Unity when you're doing stuff. So, if I go over to Text Mesh Pro, I would say import in the essential re resources and the examples just for the sake of the text that they give you in there. It is really pretty. I love it. So it's worthwhile sticking it in to you. There we go. And now you're ready to go and import in Messi's Easy Settings Toolkit. Messed. Oh dear God. Why do I come up with these names? Once you've imported in Messi's Easy Settings Toolkit, you're going to want to create the assets that you're going to need for your game and those are the settings manager so right click and go to create the messy coder messed settings manager you can give it any funky name you want funky name and also we want an audio container so i'm going to go messed audio container we'll call this one audio container for an audio container we need to have an audio mixer I don't currently have one in my scene so i'm just going to go over here in my audio folder i'm going to right click and select audio mixer and let's call this audio mixer. I'll double click on that, opens up, and we'll just go and create under the master group um, music, because I've got an imagination. And right, so last we'll create FX for the sound effects and um, chat. I don't know, chat or voice. How's that? To put that, change that to voice. Voice uh, sounds like the kind of settings you would have in a game. Ambient, maybe? Ambient. There you go. And for each of these, you want to just click on, right click on the volume over here, expose the volume, and do that for all of them. And you'll notice here our exposed parameter goes up and up. And actually, you want to change the, the name of these, don't we? So if I go over here on this one, Expose the volume of the effects. Expose the volume of the voice. And expose the volume of the ambient. We've got them all in. Uh, we can rename them. Uh, so I'm just going to rename them for what they are. So we're going to rename this one to be ambient. Actually, amb ambience would be better. Rename this one to be, uh, what was it, effects this one to be master you get what we're doing don't you don't we really need me to be doing this but let's do it together and then rename the last one to be what was the last one voice voice there we go so we've got all of our audio so now if we go back into our project go back into our audio container we can actually find it here open that out and choose which ones I did originally have this to auto do it and then I thought you know what maybe people just want to do this by hand in case they don't want all of them that they've got in their mixer because you never know that one's different and it's only an extra three seconds to do it so yeah just do it by hand so now we've got it in so if I go to our settings manager called funky name <laughs> also, you know what? I'm gonna rename it because <laughs> I settings manager uh, we can also say where do we want it saved. So I want it saved in the My Documents folder. I'm also going to give it a, a prefix if you wanted to. So you could even have multiple uh, saves, but I'm going to just 
call this you know i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna give it a prefix because i want to see um now i had this feature in here if you want to sync what version that you're doing of your game you look from the preference project settings page and now if i go down to the audio we can drag in our audio container and you'll notice that it's automatically populated all of these there we go you can also set a default level of your audio if you want your game so if you by default you want the sound effects to be a little bit quieter let's say 0.6 voice to be 0.8 ambience to be 0.6 uh, let's put sound effects to 0.8 there you go music 0.7 just so it looks pretty <laughs> it looks pretty there you go and now when your game starts that that will be the default settings of your volume for your game isn't that pretty it is pretty so we're also going to need a post processing effect i'm just going to create another folder just to keep well just to keep things tidy in this demo and go create and post processing profile i'm going to call this pp um <laughs> yeah don't ask why so we're going to click here and there you can choose which ones you want to put in there for the sake of this example i'm just going to put all of them in and then uh you know <laughs> enable them i wouldn't recommend you just randomly click every single profile and put it setting in into your game i would advise that you actually try to make them look pretty if you're wondering if adding a post-processing effect makes art assets appear magical in your scene I have to tell you that won't happen, but thanks to Reverse Int, we've got a load of free art that we're including in this package of mist. Thank you, Reverse Int, for your beautiful hexed art and trees and farms. You'll notice that I've just set all of these post-processing effects settings to just random, random gibberish, so that at least you can see that they're having some kind of effect. So if we, you know, we'll, let's I, I put some more bloom in, in there. Uh, let's tweak about. Let's add more random bloom settings on there and if we turn off the color grading you'll notice it made a difference if we turn off the bloom it made a difference that's why we've done it uh, we've got the post-processing volume and the layer in our scene we need to go over to our settings manager and start adding in some options that we want to have in our settings so so this is the hardest part i have to honestly tell you this is the hardest part is coming up with what settings to put in to your settings menu 